Hi everyone, Christina Warner here. Thanks for joining me today. In my previous video that went up just before this one, I shared with you my new Olo markers. I unbox them and organize them. I'm now using Sunny Studios Cozy Christmas Stamp Set to create a fun card. Now I'm gonna do two cards in this video. This first one is very simple coloring. It's not very involved. The card is going to be very, very simple. Um, I just really wanted to try out these markers, see how they go, um, kind of make a mental note of some different ways that they behave um, in comparison to my usual alcohol marker, which is a Copic marker. Now, a few months back, I did a bunch of testing with these Olo markers with their prototypes. They were not the finished markers, but I really did enjoy them. I thought there were some really fun features of the markers that I thought were a benefit to different colorists, coloring artists and to crafters in general. And I thought they were worth exploring. So Olo was uh, generous enough to send me a new set or a full set, I should say, and I wanted to kind of play with these a little bit today. Now, I love coloring reds, especially around the holidays. And this is technically a Christmas stamp set, but I'm not going to be, going to be making it a holiday card today. I'm using some elements that are not holiday themed, and I'm going to use a sentiment that isn't necessarily holiday themed also. So I just wanted to try out using some red on that. A sofa chair, that large kind of chair, and it worked out great. I'm very picky about my red shades, and I really loved this combination of reds. As far as the cat goes, I of course colored the cat like my two cats, Sophie and Daphne, which is a gray tabby cat color. For the lamp, I did a nice aqua shade at the bottom, and then a more muted gray for the lamp shade. So I'm going to add a little bit of pink to this cat, just putting it on the, on the face and the ears. And then I'm going to call the coloring done. I use the coordinating dies. Uh, Sunny Studio sent me these stamps and dies. So big thanks to them. Uh, this stamp set is from their latest release that just went live last week. So if you're looking for some great holiday themed stamps and you're looking to add them to your stash early in the season, go ahead and check out their latest release. It's really, really beautiful. I didn't have a chance to use all of the stamps that's in the release in this video, but I'm hoping I can revisit them when it comes to this year's holiday card series. I took a white card base and I stamped my grating in some Versafine Onyx Black ink directly on the front of the card base. So I'm using the phrase, be comfy and cozy. Now this is, this is technically the second half of a phrase that you could build using that stamp set. It's supposed to be something like, may your holiday be comfy and cozy or something like that. But I decided since I was not using the holiday elements in the stamp set, that I would just have the sentiment be, be comfy and cozy. I thought that was a nice uh, kind of soft, welcoming greeting, and I thought it would work well. I used my T-square ruler and a pencil just to mark a line so that I could add a little bit of shading just to sort of create the floor for my scene. It's a very, very simple scene today. And all I'm really doing for a background is adding a little bit of shading uh, kind of at the bottom where these elements will go. I'm using BG 7.0 for this. It's a nice, very pale, pale bluish green shade. Use my eraser to erase that line. And then the last thing to do is just to arrange all of these little elements directly above. I put some foam adhesive on the back of each one of these elements. I just cut my foam tape so it was nice and small for all of these intricate areas. And as far as assembling this goes, I wanted the side table to sort of be a little bit behind the chair. So I uh, nestled it right underneath. And then I put the cat on the chair itself. So the cat looks like it's cozied up in the chair. Now, if this is my house, there's probably a large sofa and the cats are taking up every single seat. <laughs> they love sitting on the couch. So that finishes this first card. It came together rather quickly. I really love that red chair. It really stands out. So I'm going to go on to another card. 
And this one's going to use a stamp set from the greeting farm called Hocus Pocus. Unfortunately, this was a stamp set that was a pre-order and then very quickly sold out. So it is not available anymore, but I did want to show you the coloring for this one anyway, because it shows coloring a person and coloring hair and other elements that you might encounter when you're using alcohol markers. So I really do love coloring the greeting farm images. I especially love um, all of the fun features. And I love that the generally they have large areas of hair and they have very simple uh, elements and shapes. So I'm going to start out with a nice sort of uh, lighter flesh tone. This was one of my favorite color combinations that I discovered when I was experimenting with the prototypes of these Olo markers. And I love how this comes together. So some things to note that I noticed while coloring with these Olo markers. Um, they are a little bit less juicy than the prototypes, which is a wonderful improvement. That was something that I let them know when I was testing those other prototypes out. I told them, hey, these just seem a little bit too juicy. Um, you might want to just see if you can step that back a little bit. And I do notice a difference in these final markers. But also because my Copics, which I've used for years and years, are starting to dry out a little bit and I'm having to re-ink them, um, what I my experience most recently with my Copics is that they're a little bit on the drier side. So these nice and new juicy markers from Olo seem very juicy in comparison. I wouldn't say they're so juicy that there's no control. Uh, it's just a little bit of a different feel. I love the brush chips on these markers. They're very similar to Copics, um, just a slightly different feel. I think these are the closest uh, this is the closest feel in a non-copic marker to a copic marker. So if any of you are looking to expand your alcohol marker collection with some additional colors or start up that collection, I would highly recommend considering Olo markers for that. Now, Olos are a little bit different than a traditional marker in that they have two ends. I'm not really showing or explaining that in this video today, but I'll put a link up in the top corner where you can check out that a live stream where I talk about the prototypes even more. Um, I answer a lot of questions from everyone in the chat about how their markers are put together, um, all the different uh, combinations you can make, things like that. But just so you know, um, all the links to everything I'm using today are included in the video description down below. So if you want to check out these markers or any of the stamps I'm using today, I'll have those linked. Okay, so I did some kind of really simple coloring for her hair. That's my favorite way to color hair. And when I was coloring the face, it kind of crept past that line. So I used my zero marker just to push that color back a little bit. So I'm going to continue coloring and I'm going to turn on some music so you can enjoy. Uh, please enjoy this very uh, witchy coloring that I'm doing with my Olo markers.
After all of the coloring was finished, I started to cut this out. Now there are a couple interior pieces that I thought it would just be easiest to use an X-Acto knife to get that started. So for this interior piece, I cut it with an X-Acto knife and then I cut around with scissors up right up against the edge for the remainder of the image. And to make the edges look perfectly cut, um, this is a trick that I've done for years. If you've been watching me for any length of time and have seen me color and cut out images, you absolutely know this trick. What I do is I sort of hide the black core or the white core of the cardstock by using a black marker. And I just run that marker along the edge of my cutout image, including those interior sections. And just coloring that edge with a black marker kind of hides any of the gaps that you might have after cutting it out. It also just makes it look a little bit more finished and polished. This is one of my favorite tips that I love to share when it comes to cutting out colored images, especially if you don't have a dye that would cut it out, uh, leaving like a white margin around the outside edge. I decided to use the Stacked Stars die from Simus's Stamp to create a background for my card. My card itself is five by seven, and I'm using a black glitter paper with that Stacked Star die cut out and also a purple glitter paper. I thought that purple glitter paper went well with her dress. So I stamped and white heat embossed a greeting. This just says, wishing you the best, and that's a greeting from the stamp set. And then I cut my two stack stars die cuts apart into different segments just so I could sort of move them around on the card, spread it out, make it look a little bit more random. So I used some glue and took my time gluing all of this down. I then put some foam adhesive on the back of my uh, colored image and I filled in all those little tiny spots on the image and then use some tweezers to press that down onto the center area of the card. Now when I cut out all of those uh, stars for the background, the outline of them, it rem I also got the interior stars. So I thought it'd be fun to glue down some of those stars kind of just going around that whole area behind the girl and also to make the girl stand a little bit more and also help that white greeting kind of look more purposeful I decided to add a white dash line around the outer edge of the card and while I had my white gel pen out I decided it would be fun to add some little sparkles and little dots and little crisscrosses things like that just around the stars um, to give it more of a glistening kind of magic look. I think you could also have used that dash line and instead of having an outline around the outer edge of the card, you could have it like a swirling line. I think that would be really cute going along with that magic theme. So here are the two cards that I created using my new OO markers. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you check out all the links down below and I will see you guys in another video very, very soon.